Saint Augustine commentary on the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 34 to 51, following. We have declared then why it was at the tenth hour. Let us see what follows. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He finds his own brother Simon and says unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. Messiah in Hebrew, Christ in Greek, in Latin, anointed. Chrisma is anointing in Greek. Christ, therefore, is the anointed. He is peculiarly anointed, preeminently anointed, wherewith all Christians are anointed, he is preeminently anointed. Hear how he speaks in the psalm, Wherefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. For all the holy ones are his fellows, but he, in a peculiar sense, is the holy of holies, peculiarly anointed, peculiarly Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Kephas, which is by interpretation Peter. It is not a great thing that the Lord said the, whose son Peter was. What is great to the Lord? He knew all the names of his own saints, whom he predestinated before the foundation of the world. And do you wonder that he said to one man, You are the son of this man, and you shall be called this or that? Is it a great matter that he changed his name and converted it from Simon to Peter? Peter is from Petra, a rock, but the Petra rock is the church. In the name of Peter then was the church figured. And who is safe unless he who builds upon the rock? And what says the Lord himself? He that hears these my words and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man building his house upon a rock. He does not yield to temptation. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. But he that hears my words and does them not, now leech, let each one of us fear and beware. I will liken him to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. What profit is it to enter the church for him who builds upon the sand? For by hearing and not doing, he builds indeed, but on the sand. For if he hears nothing, he builds nothing. But if he hears, he builds. But we ask, where? For if he hears and does, he builds upon the rock. If he hears and does not, he builds upon the sand. There are two kinds of builders, those building upon the rock and those building upon the sand. What then are those who do not hear? Are they safe? Does he say that they are safe because they do not build? They are naked beneath the rains, before the winds, before the floods. When these come, they carry away those persons before they overthrow the houses. It is then the only security, both to build and to build upon the rock. If you will hear and do not, you build, but you build a ruin, and when temptation comes it, to, comes it overthrows the house, and carries away you with the ruin. And if you do not hear, you are naked. 
you yourself are dragged away by those temptations. Hear then and do. It is the only remedy. How many perchance on this day, by hearing and not doing, are hurried away on the stream of this festival? For through him, <coughs> for through hearing and not doing, the flood comes. This annual festival, the torrent is filled; it will pass away and become dry. But woe to him whom it shall carry away. Know this. Then, beloved, that unless a man hears and does, he builds not upon the rock, and he does not belong to that great name which the Lord so commanded. For he has called your attention. For if Simon had been called Peter before, you would not have so clearly seen the mystery of the rock, and you would have thought that he was called so by chance, not by the providence of God. Therefore, God willed that he should be called first something else, that, by the very change of name, the reality of the sacrament might be commanded to our notice. And the day following he would go forth into Galilee, and finding Philip, he said unto him, Follow me. Now he was of the city of Andrew and Peter, And Philip finds Nathanael, Philip, who had been already called by the Lord, and he said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus, the son of Joseph. He was called the son of that man to whom his mother had been espoused. For that he was conceived and born while she was still a virgin, All Christians know well from the gospel. This Philip said to Nathanael, and he had the place from Nazareth. And Nathanael said unto him, From Nazareth something good can come. What is the meaning, brethren? Not as some read, for it is likewise wont to be read, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? For the word of Philip follow who says, Come and see. But the word of Philip can suitably follow both readings, whether you read it thus as confirming, From Nazareth, something good can come. To which Philip replies, <coughs> Come and see. Or, whether as doubting and making the whole question, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Since then, whether read in this manner or in that, the words following are not incompatible. It is for us to inquire which of the two interpretation we shall adopt. What sort of a man is this Nathanael was, we prove by the words which follow. Hear what sort of a man he was. The Lord himself bears testimony. Great is the Lord, known by the testimony of John. Blessed Nathanael, known by the testimony of the truth. Because the Lord, although he had not been commanded by the testimony of John, himself to himself bore testimony. Because the truth is sufficient for its own testimony. But because men were not able to receive the truth, they sought the truth by means of a lamp, and therefore John was sent to show them the Lord. Here the Lord bearing testimony to Nathanael. Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip says to him, Come and see. And Jesus sees Nathanael coming to him and, saying, and says concerning him, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Great testimony, not of Andrew, not of Peter, not of Philip, was that said which was said of Nathanael, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. What do we then, brethren? Are this man to be the first among the apostles? 
Not only is Nathanael not found as first among the apostles, but he is neither the middle nor the last among the twelve, although the Son of God bore such testimony to him, saying, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Is the reason asked for? Insofar as the Lord intimates, we find a probable reason. For we ought to understand that Nathanael was learnt and skilled in the law, and for that reason was the Lord unwilling to place him among his disciples, because he chose unlearned persons, that he might by them confound the world. Listen to the apostle speaking these things. For you see, says he, your calling brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things that are despised, has God chosen ye, and things which are not as though they were things that are, to bring to naught things that are. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 to 28 if a learned man had been chosen, perhaps he would have said that he was chosen for the reason that his learning made him worthy of choice. Our Lord Jesus Christ, wishing to break the necks of the proud, did not seek the orator by means of the fisherman, but by the fisherman he gained the emperor. Great was Cyprian as an orator, but before him was Peter the fisherman, by means of whom not only the orator, but also the emperor should believe. No Nabon was chosen in the first place, no learned man, because God chose the weak things of the world that he might confound the strong. This man then was great and without guile, and for this reason only was not chosen, lest the Lord should seem to any to have chosen the learned. And from this same learning in the law, it came that when he heard from Nazareth, for he had searched the scripture and knew that the Savior was to be expected thence, while the other scribes and Pharisees had difficulty in knowing this man then, very learned in the law, when he heard Philip saying, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph. This man, who knew the scriptures excellently well, when he heard the name Nazareth, was filled with hope and said, From Nazareth something good can come.